I want to welcome you to Golden Rule Media Entertainment Conversations, as well as our sister station, Dream Chasers Radio. This is your host, Yaga Diamond, and I am so excited to have my next guest on the show today. You don't know. You don't know. We'll be right back. Don't you go anywhere. Welcome back to the show. Okay, so music, music, music. Go. Okay, wait. Whew, calm down. Okay, so we have an amazing guest on the show today. Mr. Paul Anthony is here. Welcome to the show. What's going on, y'all? Y'all, what's going on? I love the energy. I love the vibrancy. What's going oh. on? Oh, I'm just, I'm excited to have you here. That's what's going right. on. So how are you doing? Man, I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Living in my truth, making every day count. Uh, I, I'm excited about what's in front of me. A lot of it I can't see. I don't have to see. I know it's there waiting for me. I'm just excited to share it with the world. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. So let's go back a little bit and let's talk about, you know, you before you became the uh, Paul Anthony. Mm. Okay. Well, that's going to be hard because I was born. That's my name, Paul Anthony. I was born that way, but I know what you mean. Right. Um, so uh, with us, huh, we, we started, um, my brothers and I, B and Lou, Bo Legg and Lou, B Fine, we actually started when I was 11, wow. Lou was 12, B was eight, but I actually started with me one day, my dad was in the, he was, he was in the house and he heard me singing in the, uh, in the bathroom. I was singing a Smokey Robinson song and he heard my vibrato and my melody and the whole thing. And he told my, my mother, I said, wait a minute, Anthony got a voice. Cause I was just <laughs> singing, you know, next thing you know, I'm singing with him because he was part of the doo -wop, one of those doo-wop groups back in the day. Next thing you know, I'm downstairs on the streets of Bedford-Stuyvesant, singing on the streets, standing on top of a garbage can with my uncle and all his lieutenants from Sonny Carson's Revolution. They was watching out for me, make sure I'm good. And, and I'm just singing my behind off. And Lou and B was upstairs in the window. Later on, my dad would teach them how to sing. And we formed a group, you know, with a neighborhood friend mm -hmm. of ours, Edwin Guy. And we did the Apollo Theater. And that was very interesting because in, in my family, music is not an option. That's what you do. You sing. We did homework and then we sang. And quite often my dad would take us down to uh, the A train. We get on the A train, tied, sleeping, leaning on one another like this, you know, with young kids. And, you know, we get up at 125th Street and you know, he dropped the hat in the subway and we'd be singing for hours. Wow. That's, that's how we started, you know? So, um, mm. uh, so fast forward, I mean, we've been grinding ever since then. We got mm -hmm. signed when we were 16 at an old label called Chess Janus Records. And mm. later, later on, we joined our cousins, Kurt, Shy Shy, and Baby Jerry. And uh, we formed a group full force. And we became the hottest band in Brooklyn, you know? Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's how we all started, you know? Just hitting, doing every club every place you know we was big on promoting back then you know kurt his dad had a, an old electric 225 we would take scotch tape and tape up the car with our photo <laughs> we'd go with a bullhorn and we'd go around all five boroughs full force is back full force is back we didn't win the way but we said full force is back and we'd be taping up our our photos in the subways with scotch tape and elmer's glue and Oh, that's how we started when we was young, man. It was crazy. Wow. And I remember seeing posters everywhere, too. I mean, New York City is so popular for that. Just everywhere that you could put it. I mean, yeah. I, I don't even think anybody got penalized for doing it. It was just so right. many places that right. it didn't even matter. It didn't even Absolutely. matter. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Wow. Wow. That is so cool. And to have those, you know, roots and that and that dedication so early, how did it help you in your career today? Oh, well, it helped you because, you know, you appreciate it, you know, the grind from when we was younger and, and even when we formed a group, just doing shows everywhere. And see, we was always ahead of our time because when we first came out, our music had a rock hip hop edge to it. You know what I mean? So it was way ahead of its time and people weren't ready for it. And I'm talking about way before we discovered any group. So our late great manager, Steve Selm, said, you know what, you guys are putting yourself too much under a microscope. You're exceeding to be different. Slow down, take it easy, produce some other groups. Mm -hmm. And that was easy for us because then we didn't try to be different. So, mm -hmm. you know, the, for our first our first success was actually we co-wrote a song for Curtis Blow called Basketball. Oh. You know? Yeah, that was our first oh. success. 
They're wow. playing basketball. Yeah, that was our first joint. We co-wrote that. I remember but that. Our, yeah, 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 yeah. It still goes on every every basketball mm -hmm. season. But our first major success is when we had our, our dancers in a group named uh, Kango Kid and Dr. Ice, and later on the educated rapper joined them, and they formed the group UTFO. Mm -hmm. And uh, my brother B Fine came with an idea of making a rap record about a girl who just disses everybody. And at the time, he loved the police, so. That's how we started Roxanne, Roxanne, mm. you know, co-wrote that and produced that. That went through the roof. I mean, it was a phenomenon because it was one of first of the many on, um, rap records that went crazy. We're still in the Guinness Book of World Records. Yeah. And then um, that was like, phew. so we said, you know something? We want to make sure that's not perceived as luck. So once again, B's fine. So you say, you know something? There's a void. There's not enough Latins, not Puerto Ricans. So we, we, purposely looked for a Puerto Rican girl who could sing in a way that everyone could sound or could sing like her. And Mike Hughes, who hung out with us around East Flatbush, you know, he went to the front house, found this young lady named Lisa, brought her to our Brooklyn basement when she was 16, 17. We all auditioned her, had her sing a few things, and the rest is history. Made the group Lisa, Lisa and Cold Jam. Yeah, I remember that. Opened, that. That opened up freestyle dance music. When we brought out Lisa, there was no Gloria Estevan, no J-Lo, nope. no Ricky Martin. Nope. We created freestyle dance music. So after that, between Roxanne, Roxanne, Lisa, Lisa, there was a, there was a big bidding war over full force. And I, I, I remember Steve Sam, he shared an office the size of a large bathroom with another good friend of ours, Russell Simmons. Wow. You know? And they started together. And I remember when uh, Rick Rubin uh, went to, I think, Warner Brothers to start Def Jam. They went with Ashley, I think, LL, Beastie Boys, and Full Force mm -hmm. to start Def Jam. But we were our own entity, so we got our own deal. You know what I mean? So yeah. it was, a, but a lot of grinding, a lot of rejection letters. I mean, forget about it. Every label turned us down, blah, blah, blah. You know, um, I decided that uh, the best way to kill time was to get an education. So I went and I got my social degree in accounting. I went and got my bachelor's degree in accounting because I knew when not if, I knew when we made it, that was something I was going to be able to apply right. to, to what we're doing, you know? So yeah, it was, it was, it was a journey, but it was well worth it. That, you know what? I remember Lisa, Lisa and Cold Jam because I was in New York at that time with my mom. And okay. let me tell you something. It was on every street corner, all the rap, all of that. Curtis Blow was saying yep. basketball. I remember that. I remember all of that. I was like that. I was a little kid. My mom used to call me squeaky because I could not sing. <laughs> <laughs> you sound like you got a voice though. I don't know. Well, I grew into my voice. You know how some people yeah, have yeah. a voice and they have that voice from they're young. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My voice was way too mature for me to even begin to control. Okay. okay. I grew into my voice in my 20s. I, I learned how by going and taking on opera classes in college right. to learn how to that's that's how big my voice was. Okay. To me. And so I learned how to control it. Then I went right back into R&B and right. the rest is history. But I mean, I remember that. I remember basketball. I remember all those songs. Amazing, amazing. You know, there are so many different talents out there today that you have to have plays and you got to have this and you got to have that. It's all on the internet. Do yeah. people still go out and scout people? Do you find people like it was before? Do you Do, do they even do that anymore? You know, it's still done, but now it's done in such a way because, and I, I, I teach this when I speak out, um, the, the, the young artists, you, you are your own corporation. There's so many avenues and pathways to build your brand that it's not hard to find it. Now it's even, it's harder that you have to sift through because everybody knows how the game knows how to find SoundCloud and, and get on Instagram and, and Spotify. It's a lot, you know, but mm -hmm. you know, you have to shift through, but you know, at the end of the day, it's, it's still the same method. You know, once you find something that has the talent and they put the work in, oh yeah, then you're going to have to go ahead and check them out fully because now it's about the engagement, the talent, how yeah. can you really bring it forth? And you know, it's so funny because now people say, well, hey man, they got to put the work in. That's always been the case. I oh, mean, when, yeah. we, when we dropped Lisa, it, we dropped it in England. Uh, it was the number nine song on a compilation album. We had to blow it up over there first and then bring yeah. it over here. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. That so was always the, 
that's yeah, always yeah. the key thing is to go over where yeah. you're, you know over there <laughs> yep where and you still do that today don't you yes yes yep yep and i love that because now you build you know you work out the kinks and you're much more appreciated from home sometimes thank and you i, love that. I, I mean that. going over there is just amazing i mean the people over in the uk and in germany and brussels and france oh, yeah. they literally italy i mean japan i mean they literally love 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 you they love the music you and they, they know how to appreciate it. It's just wonderful. I oh. want to congratulate you though on your your uh doc your honorary doctorate in philosophy and humanitarianism. Blah, 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 blah. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes, yes. I'm trying to say that fast. Humanitarianism, yeah, right? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm blessed, you know. Shout out to Vernon Caddy and Dr. Candace Matthews. They they led the brigade on that. And um it makes sense, you know. So now I'm getting used to the phrase of Dr. Paul Anthony. And Dr. I said, you know, I tell people, I said, well, listen, I didn't go to school for it. They said, yeah, but you put the work in. I yeah. said, you know, you saved a lot of lives and you touched a lot of lives and you brought a lot of laughter to people, you know, which is healing, you know, being a cancer champion, being a Grammy Award certified producer, being a his historic actor and various things. So definitely touched a lot of lives. So yeah, I put the wow. work in. So I'm loving, I'm loving that. Definitely. That is amazing. Congratulations mm -hmm. on that. It doesn't come without a lot, a lot of putting in that time, paying your dues yeah. and, and being there and accessible to people and That's wanting right. to do it. You know what I mean? Yes. It's not for accolades. It's not for money. It's because you are really, truly putting your heart into it. And I appreciate that. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. And the you hit the nail on the head. It's wanting to do it. Um, but then when you know that, um, I mean, we all have degrees of being the chosen one, but when you know you're chosen to do this, or better yet, when you're instructed to touch lives and change lives, and then, then there's, there's your want is secondary. This is what you're supposed to do. As right. long as you follow instruction. Yeah, so I'm, I'm good with that. Yeah. Oh my gosh, yes, yes. So that brings us to your new song. Yes, man. So let me take Ready some to learn time. your love? Yes, and that's that's the other thing when I talk to couples and I talk to my fellow kings and my lions and my lionesses, you know, sometimes, you know, we have to unlearn and relearn one another because as the song starts out in the video, familiarity can breed contentment and we get, you know, complacent and stop doing the things you once did. So sometimes it's good to go back to the beginning and once you see that when you the energy is connective and, you know, it's say, so you know what? I'm now I'm ready to learn your love before I was enjoying it we was enjoying one another you know let's take time to learn one another and that's what yeah. the song is about ready yeah. to learn your love Absolutely. that is wonderful I mean we were talking I was talking about that with a friend of mine today communication oh, yeah? sometimes can be the breakdown of a relationship mm. you said communication can be the breakdown mm -hmm. oh give me give me some of that please explain please explain <laughs> I like that so you know how you think one thing and they're thinking one thing, but right. it's wrong. So uh -huh. it could be that, you know, oh, he doesn't like me anymore because of this. And uh -huh. then he could be thinking, well, she doesn't like me anymore because of this. It could be the uh -huh. same thing that you're thinking, yet it's no truth in it because they haven't communicated to each other. They haven't right. spoken it. So the communication is breaking down and it could be the destruction of a relationship. And it doesn't matter whether or not it's a best friend, a family member, um, you know, boyfriend, girlfriend. It doesn't right. matter what the relationship is. Relationships have breakdowns when there's a communication uh, distortion. Well, that's right. So, so, so you just clarified it. Communicate, there is a problem when there's a communication distortion. Mm -hmm. So you 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 added that word to it. Now I'm all right. with you. When right. there's a communication distortion, not when there's communication. I think the lack of communication can be the mother of all breakdowns. You know, because you said, this one's feel this way. This well, talk to one another. Don't talk to right. one another. Talk to one another, and let's communicate. You know, understanding is the key. But you can't have understanding without communication. Sometimes, you right. know what I mean. So yeah. if not, then it will get distorted, as you said. But Definitely. I think and that's what I call the breakdown. It's like mm. it breaks, it just breaks down. Just as a it's like right. it's like as if you have a car that's running and all of a sudden it just breaks down. Uh-huh. Right. You know, but and I, that's what I think for your song, ready to learn your love. Right. Right. I was thinking about that. I mean, I right. am ready now. I I really am committed right. to learning your love because everybody has a love language. 
Yeah, yeah, and that's the whole thing. And unlearn, relearn, you know, just re-up on it. But sometimes when you're ready to learn your love, because sometimes you can get caught up in the throes of sex. You can get to, you can get caught up in the throes of the newness. Okay, well, well, all that melts away what you got. You yeah. know, let's yeah. learn one another. You know, so yeah. that's 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 why I wrote that song. That's nice. I like that. I like that. I like that a lot. Well, wow, wow. Thank you so much for being on the show. Is there Absolutely. anything that we missed today that you would like to tell your fans? Yeah, so a few things really quick. Y'all look out for the book. I'm working on the book. It's going to be all that. I'm Listen, I ain't holding nothing back, okay? I am so in my truth, unapologetically coming with the real. You bring you some God sexy. You bring you some real truth. Everything you want to know. I'm holding no punches back. I spent four wonderful hours with my good friend in heaven, Dr. Sebi. He shares some very, very private things with me. Y'all know that. And I'm going to be talking about that in the book. Share some private time with the Godfather soul, James Brown. He shares some things with me. And Michael Jordan and, and the things that we did in Brooklyn with Nikki. And there's so many things that we have not said that we didn't say in the first book. But I've always been the tip of the sword. I've always been that guy that would say things that others shouldn't, wear things that others wouldn't, do things that others couldn't. Now I'm coming with the real, with the book. Um, we're going to do a, a, a single on the house party bullies because everybody wants to know about what's going on with the house party bullies. And look, let me just give you a little bit so I have no problems when I get off this. We used to have fun. I thought you'd be the one to be by my side. Forever more, I was wrong. I thought your love was strong, but it was so weak that I could not compete. Girl, you're such a freak. Uh, uh, oh, you look so good. I wish I could, but that just ain't my type of high, baby. Me and you was crazy cool. I had to give him a little bit of that, okay? <laughs> just a little bit. That's a little quick show. But yeah, coming come with a house party bully song. It's going to be crazy. You got your silly ass locked in the icebox. More shows, more concerts, more solo shows. I got another single that's coming after this. Yeah, so y'all be on the lookout. Just check the... the the legend Paul Anthony, Full Force World, and uh, we're gonna be doing some special things. Awesome, awesome! I can't wait. And the Absolutely. book, hey, you guys, okay. keep your yeah. eyes out. My gosh, my gosh! So, where can people keep their eyes out at? Definitely. Well, you know, on Instagram, Facebook, uh, our sites. I'm at the Legend Paul Anthony. Y'all get at me. Um, once again, it's gonna be some special things, y'all. If you're any of you know my history. There's going to be a lot of pictures in the They're fun. You know what I mean? So, um, yeah, you can find me on all the sites um, and uh, uh, fullforceworld.com. Just reach out to me. Now I'm doing some speaking engagements as well. I'm going to be hosting some fashion shows coming up. Got a lot of interesting things coming up. So just be on the lookout for us. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thank you, Mr. Anthony, for being on the show. Thank you. Oh, wait, hold on a second. Doctor. Oh, I got to get used to that. Uh-huh. Uh, doctor. Uh, uh, the, uh, listen. Doctor. <laughs> okay. Okay. I appreciate you. I receive, Queen. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Paul Anthony, for being on the yeah. show today. I appreciate it. I right, thank you for exchanging that vibrancy. I appreciate you. No problem. And I want to thank you guys so much for tuning in. Don't forget that the link is going to be in the description box below. So it'll be easy for you guys to find it. Don't forget to like, follow and comment on all of his social media. If you follow Instagram or Facebook or whatever you want to go ahead and do, whatever your preference, make sure you do that and support, support. And now I'm backing up because Dr. Paul Anthony has to introduce his song to you. Yes, so this is the legend Paul Anthony, aka Dr. Paul Anthony, aka Stab. And I want to introduce Ready to Learn Your Love.
Yeah.